Welcome. This is what is happening on the sun today, the 17th of July, 2011. 36 years ago this day, the Apollo and Soyuz capsules docked in orbit for the first time. They carried out a number of joint scientific experiments, one of which was solar. So our trivia question for today is what was the solar experiment that they carried out? The answer will be given at the end. From the GOES X-ray plot, we can see that we've had a few spiky B flares and the background is starting to rise. This generally means that there's something somewhere is growing, or there's a new region emerging, or a new region coming over the east limb. So let's take a look at the sunspot regions and see what's going on. The sunspot situation is nearly as complicated as it was yesterday. Region 1245, or was it 1253, I can never remember now, died away overnight. However, a new region popped up behind it and that is growing rapidly and I think that is the origin of both the spiky B flares and also the increase in background. Region 1250 remains a single large spot and is very stable, same as 1251. Region 1256 um, seems to have decayed a little bit and region 1254 uh, down in the southeast has grown quite significantly. So maybe contributing to this increase in the background and maybe even some of the small flares. Here I'm going to have to take issue with Noah. There seems to be some confusion between regions 1252 and 1255. They claim that 1255 died away and 1252 is still there. I think it's the other way round. You take a look at the uh, magnetic movie and the sunspot movie and I think you'll agree with me. There's also a tiny region with just a couple of spots popping up behind region 1255 near the northeast limb. We'll see whether that amounts to anything in the next couple of days. You're probably going to have to run the sunspot and magnetic movies through several times to see all the things that are going on and it's probably best to do it in full screen so you can see all the details. Or even better yet, possibly to go back to the SDO data and see the original. But anyway, there's three things that I want you to take a look at here. First is the rapid development of that region in the northwest. Second is the development of region 1254 down in the southeast. And lastly, see if you can resolve this dilemma between regions 1255 and 1252 up in the northeast. Let's take a look at the new region in the northwest. 24 hours ago it looked like this. Not the red arrow, but the green arrow. The red arrow is region 1245 which disappears relatively rapidly. The green arrow is where this new region starts to pop up. In 24 hours, it becomes like this, which is quite an impressive region. This sort of explosive growth is the sort of thing that produces flares. We might expect some larger flares from this region in the near future. In fact, I'm rather surprised that we haven't had some already. In the transition region movie, that's about 50,000 degrees, you can see a lot of minor filaments and prominences erupting, but none of them seem large enough to produce major coronal mass ejections. I've marked here four filaments that I think are likely to erupt. One is on the back side of the sun up in the northwest. The one I think that's most likely to go is the one in the southwest. But there are two smaller ones in the northeast and the southeast that also have a possibility of erupting. So we should keep an eye on these for over the next few days. In the low temperature coronal movie you can see a small region coming over the northeast limb towards the end of the sequence. In the two million degree corona you can see that that coronal hole has now moved over to the western hemisphere and should start affecting us in the next day or two with high speed solar wind streams. SOHO is still having software problems so we're getting just snippets of data. I'll include them for completeness but there's not very much to see there. There may be a hint of a coronal mass ejection off the west limb but that's about it. We can see from the ACE data the state of the solar wind. While the temperature of the solar wind has increased over the last 24 hours the velocity seems to have fallen yet further, yet the density has remained relatively constant. So we're seeing no effects from that coronal hole as yet. When we look at the image of the Arctic auroral zone, we see that it is relatively quiet. Similarly, the KP index is varying between 0 and 2, which is also at the very low end of the quiet range. The greater than 2 MeV electron flux is varying on its diurnal pattern, but is a little lower than yesterday and the greater than 100 MeV proton flux remains flat, which is not surprising because we haven't had any major flares to give us a proton event. Okay, in summary then, the X-ray background is at the B2 level, the sunspot number has fallen to 75, 
Radio sun intensity is 94 solar flux units. Solar wind speed has dropped to 365 kilometers per second with a density of about 7 protons per cubic centimeter. Geospace conditions are considered quiet. So my forecast for the next 24 hours is there's a poor chance of getting C flares but an even more remote chance of getting M or X flares. Sunspot number should remain about what it is currently. We have a good chance of getting coronal mass ejections. The solar wind speed will ease higher as we move into this high speed solar wind stream from the coronal hole. And the chances of getting a major geomagnetic storm in the next 24 hours is remote. In the longer term, there is a region about a day or two days behind the East Limb that will return, but it's not looking all that impressive. So again, to get any major flares, we would have to have major growth in existing regions or the emergence of a new region. So this new region in the northwest may, at least for the next few days, be our main source of uh, activity. If you want to find out more about what's going on in the sun, check out some of the links in the description box below. If you want to see earlier editions of the sun today, go to my channel, they're all listed there. The answer to the trivia question is that they use the Apollo capsule to block out the sun uh, like a chronograph, allowing those on board the Soyuz to take pictures of the outer corona of the sun. I think that's actually quite clever. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.